Hey fellow adventurers, welcome back to Natural Medic Adventures, and hey, this week on the show, I want to give you tips that help figure out how to do light and fast on the trail. You might be a beginner backpacker, and if you are, you're in the right place, because we're going to talk about some beginning stuff to get sorted out uh, before you go on your first backpacking trip. The good, the bad, and the ugly. So let's get started. Probably the first thing to think about. I know a lot of people say you should get this last, but you still need to figure out whether you get it last or you get it in the middle or whatever, what is the perfect backpack for me? Now the perfect backpack for me, I determined, is the REI Flash 55. I've got some stuff hanging off of it right now. This is a pack that I use all the time. I would say mid price range, I believe right around 200 bucks for this. It's a 55 liter pack. It's got a lot of different accessories. I'm not going to go into too much detail here. So I have a full video on it and I will link that below along with the product link so you can check that out for yourself. This pack is versatile. It works great. It's far and beyond my very first pack that I had. Uh, yeah, my very first pack, internal frame pack, was a, from REI also, but it was from a company called La Fuma. It's a French company. They don't even manufacture, I don't think, U.S. stuff maybe anymore or very, very little. It's not an REI, at least. It's a very heavy pack, versatile pack. It's a 65-liter pack, I think. It's pretty big. It's pretty heavy compared to the other one. Get yourself a pack that fits you. Go to an outfitter. It doesn't have to be REI. Get it fitted to make sure it fits. I'm 6'2". You can't see my whole body here, but I have a regular size torso. Well, everybody's a little bit differently configured. Make sure that you get a pack that's going to fit you and most importantly fit your gear. And when you're getting your stuff together, you'll create an essential list. And I'm going to do a list for you that you can download below down in the description. Have a checklist of everything that you need and that should help you figure out exactly what you need to pack for your adventure. Hey, if you like this video, Make sure to click that thumbs up. Hey, leave a comment below and think about subscribing to the channel. Thanks. You want to dress appropriately and take clothes that are appropriate for the condition. I'm currently in Texas, but I'm getting ready to move to Wyoming. August 1st, I'm starting a new job up there. And the weather is completely different than where I am right now in North Central Texas. Deserts and mountains and canyons. Right now we're in 100 degree heat been a lot of heat heat related alerts and stuff like that so I'm not backpacking right now this time of year because it's way too hot number one number two if I was I would pack differently than I'm going than when I'm going up to Wyoming you want to have some type of a hat I've talked about this in other videos and I'll link to those below so they're more in-depth you want to have a hat if you're going to cold conditions a warm hat a little beanie there and different layers of course so you might want to have uh, a mid-layer like this from Outdoor Research. This is just a fleece mid-layer. For pants, I usually wear convertible pants year-round. And these are from Sportif. I believe I got them on Poshmark, but I believe you can get those convertible pants like these. I will, like, I'll, like I said, I will link to all this stuff below. They're comfortable because they can adapt to any weather condition, whether it's hot, whether it's cold etc. And I like to wear pants even when it's hot because bugs, thorns, etc. that could get on you. To wear exclusively when I'm hiking, backpacking, I wear a sun hoodie. This one is from a company on Amazon called Belief. I've done a review on this one before as well. Comfortable, has a hood, has thumb holes so you can pretty much cover up your entire arms from the sun if it's too hot. SPF built into the fabric, etc. For undergarments, socks, something like these Merrells, these are just uh, mid-length hiker socks, they'll work for you. And I wear Equipo underwear because all that stuff that I just showed you is all synthetic fabrics. You don't want to wear cotton. A wool is fine as far as uh, being a non-synthetic or a wool blend of some sort. But cotton, as they say, cotton kills. Don't wear cotton when you're out there in the outdoors, okay? And as far as shoes go, I wear the Salomon Crosstrek 
the biggest is there's a Crosstrek 4s. And you can see they've got a little bit of wear on them. I've had to patch them right there where I guess where my toe wore a hole in these. But they've got hundreds of miles on them. And still probably got hundreds of miles to go. But they're nice, light, and fast. They're easy to dry if they get wet. That's pretty much my all-around hiking shoe uh, right now. Now moving to Wyoming, that may change because the weather up there is totally different. The terrain is different. The elevation is different, etc. Um, still taking those, but I may not be hiking in those majority of the year like I do down here in the down here in the southern United States. Now something I forgot to talk about real quick is an outside layer. The down puffy jacket from Mountain Hardware. You don't have to get one like this, but you need to have your top layer insulated. This one with down, but you can get synthetic layers as well. Just remember that down doesn't insulate as well when it gets wet. Speaking of wet, always bring a rain jacket. So this rain jacket here is a pretty inexpensive one. I believe I got it at Walmart. It is from Frog Togs. I'll link to both of these products in the description below, just like I've done with the rest of these. And you always want to have a rain jacket when you're out there in the weather whether the chance of rain is good or not. Okay, back to the video. Anyway, as far as your clothes, that covers that. Now let's talk about toiletries. I don't have any example toiletries for you, but you still want to brush your teeth when you're out there. You still want to floss. You still want to put on deodorant. Oh, gotcha. Leave the deodorant at home. You're going to sweat. You're going to be stinky. No matter what time of year you go, no matter where you are, don't worry about the deodorant, but you brush your teeth. You'll go to the travel section of your Walmart or whatever store, get you a little small tube of toothpaste. I don't have one as an example right now. If you want to cut off a full-size toothbrush to save some weight, that's perfectly fine. Not required. You can take a regular dollar toothbrush from the dollar store or Walmart or wherever and use that, just a plain toothbrush, and it's probably light enough to do that. What? Can you bring me my chapstick? Now, Speaking literally of toiletries, you do want to have a handy dandy poop kit. Poop. <laughs> I do have a whole a video on this, but you want to have some type of a digging tool. Doesn't have to be anything this fancy. Um, this is the Vargo Dig Dig. I want to say Dug Dug like the ga video game. That's my main trenching tool for, for ma making a, uh, a poo hole in the woods. I've also got some hand sanitizer in here, uh, some wipes, which you should always pack out. These are just Huggies from Walmart. And I have a bunch of napkins from different fast food restaurants. Now for the next thing you want to think about is, you want to think about multi-purpose gear when you're packing your gear. The more things you can utilize as a multi-purpose, the better off you are. I'm a YouTuber, obviously, and podcaster, but I do a lot of my filming and recording and stuff just on my phone. The phone can serve as a navigation tool, uh, you can use it to take pictures, to take videos, sometimes depending on your signal and things like that. There's different apps you can look at to look at different wildlife, plants, etc. to identify those if you want to in the wild while you're out there looking. Think about multi-uses for different items that are out there. I'm always going to be taking emergency equipment as well, and a lot of this stuff is multi-use. For example, I've got sunscreen. I carry that year-round with me in my emergency. Uh, the emergency kit is called your 10 essentials and I don't have every single thing in this kit because I don't have a bag right now that fits everything but I have a lot of things in here I've got emergency fire starting tool here just a just a fire steel for emergency fire starting sunscreen I already showed you I've got a compass I usually carry a map of some sort got some different medicines I usually do carry a pocket knife but I also carry this Gerber dime multi-tool, which is just good for gear repair and has some other little handy tools on there. Okay, well, I've talked about 10 essentials a bunch on this channel, so uh, I'll link to that video so you can see. Some extra medicine. In this particular case, this is uh, <laughs> Imodium. Just in case uh, nature calls out there in the woods, you don't want to have to be stopping every once every 30 minutes to go to the bathroom. You gotta, you gotta fix that. Now, as far as my first aid kit, which is part of the 10 essentials, something very simple. Pre-made adventure medical kits, 0.5. It's got pretty much everything I need for myself, 
I do have a bigger kit I carry if I'm going with a group or going with multiple people. Since I'm a paramedic, I'm the, the default medical guy. This is what I carry. And I do have a first aid video. I'll link to that as well in the, in the uh, description below. So you can check that out. But definitely want to carry those items right there. And a lot of that stuff, like I said, is multi-use. Now as far as sleeping, as far as sleeping out in the outdoors, you want something that's comfortable. I, for a long time, was a sleeping bag user. Used mummy bags and didn't even, reali didn't even realize that backpacking quilts were a thing. Didn't realize they were out there. But I did invest in a backpacking quilt. And I've showed it on other videos. It's, this is the Featherstone Moon Dance quilt. It's a pre-made quilt. A lot of people out there were like, oh, you need to get a custom quilt, blah, blah, blah. And that's fine. If you want to get a custom quilt, go for it. But this quilt was will go down to about freezing, which is perfectly good for where I'm at right now. Again, when I go to Wyoming, I'm probably going to invest in a more robust quilt for backpacking if I'm going in, in the colder weather, colder climates, snow, etc. And this one thing I have not done yet is backpacked in the snow. So that's something I'm looking forward to trying. So I'm sure I'll get a chance to in Wyoming. But a quilt like this, it's it's got it's a down quilt. It weighs I think it weighs about two pounds. It compacts down very small. This is just in its uh, normal storage bag that I have when I'm not on the trip. Just a just a regular laundry bag, just so I can have plenty of loft. The cool thing about quilts is they will cover it over you. They don't have any insulation underneath you. That's what your pad is for, which I'll talk about in a minute. Your pad provides that insulation against the ground and keeps you up off the ground so you're not laying directly on the ground. And the quilt basically just goes over you like a blanket. And you can spread it out so you're wide and you can spread out. Or you can put it close against you if it's, if it's colder weather. It actually has straps as well that will strap to the pad so that will make a little kind of integrated bed there in your shelter. My pad that I use currently is the Climate Insulated Static V. Down here in the south, not a big deal. It's insulated and it'll withstand down to freezing temperatures. Now, again, like I said, getting up into the Rocky Mountains in Wyoming, it's going to be different. I'm probably going to have to upgrade to a different pad that's got more insulation and a bigger R value. But I have reviews on all that, uh, the quilt and the pad on my channel. I'll link to those below. I'll listen to the product links so you can check those out wherever you like. What else do we need to talk about? We need to talk about cooking stuff. Sounds like a winner. Boiling the water now. Now I have a video in depth about cooking stuff. I keep all of mine in this little pot here. This is my entire cook kit. And I did clean it from my last backpacking trip, which has been a few months ago because it's been hot for a while. But I just have a Stanley Adventure Cup. Inside of it, I have a Coleman towel that's I cut in half for a kitchen towel. I have this, the uh, spice missile from GSI, which has some different spices on there to spice up that backpacking food. And I have a lighter. I usually carry a lighter in my pocket as well, but I, this is my main lighter for the stove. And I have the BRS 3000 stove, which is just a little titanium stove. And that pretty much is my main cook kit. I do have some other items I'll show you in just a second that are in the deal as well, just make for a little bit more comfort. I have the long handled titanium spoon from Tokes. Just a polished bowl. A long handled spoon will reach down in those uh, food bags if you're cooking freeze dried food. Works out great. And I have a cup from Sea to Summit. This is the X cup. From Sea to Summit. Just goes out like that. Got a nice sturdy rim there so it doesn't fall over and get floppy on you. And what else is in here? Oh yeah, the fuel canister. Just got a giant fuel canister from Walmart. It's a Sterno one. May change that too as well because in this colder weather the canister stoves don't work as well. Right now not a big issue, but later in the season in in Wyoming it's probably gonna be a be a minor issue. Hopefully not a major one. And a lot of that stuff, you can change it out as much as you want. That's what I'm carrying. Now, as far as water is concerned, if you have these Nalgene bottles around, which a lot of people that have been camping for a while, they're fine. There's nothing wrong with using a Nalgene bottle. 
They are heavy, but they are sturdy. Not a big deal. What a lot of people have moved to is a smart water bottle. This smart water bottle is not a full liter one. It's a 23 ounce one or uh, 700 milliliters if you're nasty. And it has a sport top on the top here. Okay, So that that helps reduce some of the weight. You've got a sport top so you can for easy drinking. Usually if I'm going to do electrolytes or something. Rondo's got what plants crave. It's got electrolytes. I'm adding to my water. I'll do a bottle like this because I can easily add that in there and it's not too much water so it doesn't make it too weak. That gets, gets me a chance to uh, get those electrolytes back in my body because I'm been there sweating. So what else do we need to think about? You need to figure out how you're going to get more water. And one way you can do that is by carrying one of these types of deals here. Now for a long time I was carrying the Sawyer Mini, but I have also used the Be Free. Be Free. And this has the, the Hydropack Seeker 2 liter bag upgrade for the, uh, the Be Free. Be Free is a great uh, water filter works pretty good but I've pretty much have gone now to the quick draw from platypus which is right here it fits really well and pairs really well with this uh, CNOC water bag you can take this top off you can gather your water and filter it real easily it filters really fast through the platypus quick draw and no real cleaning really necessary you just shake it that's what you're supposed to do to clean it and there you go I do have some more videos on this on the channel as well, which I'll link to in addition to product links below. Now, what else do we need to think about? When you're making that list, you need to make sure you're taking absolutely everything that's necessary, but nothing that you really don't that you really don't need. After you go on a few trips, you're probably going to figure out, oh, I didn't use this, I didn't use that, so I can take that off. And that's good. That's good. You need to do those kind of things to figure out what items you don't need. But as I mentioned before, try to use, try to have items in your pack that are multiple use. Another example of that is going to be this pad. A lot of times when it's uh, a lot of times when it's colder weather, I'll put a pad like this, or I have a, a pad that rolls up. Also, and this is just a generic, a folding pad, multi-purpose use. You can use this as a seat. You can use this as a pad underneath your, your inflatable pad to provide extra protection, extra insulation. And it's not, it's not really heavy, so you can use that as multiple use. Now what about tents? What about that? We didn't really talk about that. So I'm going to recommend this one because this is the River Country Trekker 2.2. It's a two-person tent. It's technically a single wall tent, but the way it's designed it has an inner mesh that makes it like it has a fly but not really so it works pretty good for one person in gear or in a pinch two people and some gear you can't put all your gear in there usually if you have two people but it's a trekking pole tent has a trekking pole either end of it I've got a full review on this one I'll be free. I'll be uh, glad to link that in the below so you can take a look at that it's gonna be lighter than a freestanding tent that has the poles and everything with it so I'd recommend something like that but you choose what you think. Hopefully this video has been helpful for you. If you if you like this video, make sure that you give the thumbs up. And if you have any questions or comments, you know, make sure and leave those below. I appreciate uh, appreciate you being here. Thank you for being here. And hey, I'll see you all on the trail. Bye bye.